Hello everyone, it's Tamara Bennett from Southern Adornments Decor. I don't know what my hair's doing over here. <laughs> Sometimes when you crimp this hair, it can go 500 different ways of crazy. So we'll just try to ignore it. How is everybody? Are y'all having a great afternoon or great morning? I just realized my automate, automatic um, like pop-up message came up there. So that Mother's Day sale is over. Sorry about that. I just removed it from the comments. Hey, Tiffany, how are you? Y'all say hi as you come in. Today, we're painting peaches. Look at this cute little basket of peaches, and it says Just Peachy on it. This is one of the designs we have in our shop at shopdoorhangers.com. If you're handy with a jigsaw or a scroll saw, or perhaps you have a laser machine, you can cut out this design yourself like I did. Um, if you're using a scroll saw or a jigsaw, go get the template um, and then use the PDF with some graphite paper and trace it on your wood to get this design. If you're using a laser machine, just pull up the SVG and plug it into your laser and um, you can start cutting. Hey Sandy, good morning. Hey Jennifer. Uh, hey Frida. She says, this Georgia peach is happy you're painting peaches. Yay. Okay. Well, this is going to be super cute. I'm excited to paint this one. And I decided to do it a little smaller because I thought it might be really cute on my welcome sign on my front porch as the letter O. Or since this one's got a like nice flat bottom, it could easily like sit on a shelf or something like that somewhere in the house. Um, so it's a very versatile sort of design. So we're going to paint the bottom part of it turquoise and then we're going to paint our peaches up here and I want to kind of do a little bit of shading on the peaches today so um we'll see how that goes and I don't even know if I have the right colors on hand for this so we're just gonna have to mix some colors hi Jerry and Anita hello Chastity and Amy um so we've got this melon color that might kind of work and then we kind of need like an orangey sort of tone I don't know we may just have to play around with a lot of paint colors today and then let's pick a color for our basket. I'm kind of thinking maybe this like teal mint color might be good. I've been really liking this one a lot lately. Hi, Trisha. You're from Georgia also. Awesome. This one's perfect for you guys. Hello, Georgiana from Alabama. Did you guys have a wonderful Mother's Day weekend? I have had better, better Mother's Days, I will be honest with you. And it was not my children's fault. I woke up sick. I woke up sick on Mother's Day of all times. Could not believe it. I think I caught something traveling home um, from my trip last week. And it just, it hit me like a ton of bricks Sunday morning. Thank you for sprinkling the love, Laura. Where's everybody watching from? Teresa's from Texas. Tiffany's from Colorado. Pat from Virginia. I'm located in Kentucky, for those of you who are wondering. If you're near the Texas area, we're doing an event in Texas, July 15th and 16th. It's the Southern Adornments Live event, and you can come and craft with us for two days. I put the link up in the description if you want to buy a ticket to it. Um, we just um, sold several recently, so but we've still got some left if you haven't gotten yours yet. Hi, Miriam. Good morning. Hello, Paula. And if you're not able to join us in person, there are virtual tickets so you can participate from home by watching the live feed. Um, we'll be giving you guys a supply list so you can get all the supplies in advance and craft along with us. And it'll be like you're in the workshop room with us watching along. Good morning, Gina. <sighs> Lynn is watching from Maryland. That's a long way. We've had gorgeous weather here in Kentucky this week, but it's supposed to get hot, hot, hot. It'll probably feel like Texas here in just a couple of days. Okay, so we're giving this whole thing a coat of this teal mint color, and then we're gonna pick, um, or we may mix in just a little bit of a darker shade of turquoise to do like these little spots in the basket where it's kind of like inset. What size are you painting on? Pat, this is a 12 inch size. It's a little smaller. Oh, your son lives in Plano. Well, that would be an awesome time to come visit him. Hey, Kim from South Carolina. Teresa's gonna be there, yay! Good morning, Sandy. <laughs> I think this turquoise is gonna be good because turquoise and like peachy tones, they really like complement one another really well. By the way, did y'all see this really cute strawberry design we've got hanging up behind me? We painted that in the Painter's Clubhouse yesterday. 
Is that not the cutest thing ever? I was telling them when I painted it that, you know, it's not it's not every time that I paint a door hanger that I think, like, I'm, I'm going to keep this one. Sometimes I think, like, oh, I like it, but I'll probably sell it. Not that one. That one, I'm keeping it. I'm going to put my name on the back and keep it. <laughs> Go hang it up on my door. But I had to hang it up in here for you guys today so y'all could at least see it. Carrie's going to be there. Yay! As Chastity said, SA Live is going to be the highlight of my year. I think it will be mine, too. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> you agree? Yeah, I agree. Aaliyah agrees. She's excited about it. <laughs> How is your hair dryer so quiet? It's not a hair dryer. It's a um, a heat gun, and it's called a cra craft or heated craft tool. I've got it linked in my Amazon favorites, and you can find the Amazon favorites link up in the video description. Um, I think it was like $30 or so, and yeah, it's whisper quiet. It's real nice and quiet. Like, you can still carry on a conversation while you're running it, so that's why I bought it, because it was so aggravating. Every time I was on a live with my hair dryer, I had to, like, stop talking so that I could let the hair dryer do its job, and people couldn't hear me over the hair dryer, but that little heat gun is so much quieter. Okay, two coats of teal mint, and then we're going to add some in these little insets in a slightly darker shade. You have any questions? Zelma's coming to Dallas. Thank you, Lou. I love the strawberries too. Y'all want a closer look at it? Here, I'll hold it up here closer. Look at the lettering. We tried like a nice little dry brush uh, technique on the lettering to add a little highlight and I really love how it turned out. At first, I didn't love it up close because, you know, the pickiness in me, I was like, ah, it doesn't, doesn't look right. But uh, like holding it this far away, it looks perfect. So, and then um, I ended up, after the after the live was over, I got to play in some more because I couldn't just stop. And I ended up adding some little 3D sort of elements with like the puff paints because I'm not real good at that yet, but I'm determined to get better at it. So if I practice it every now and then on a few door hangers, then it's I'm getting better. And then I can teach the clubhouse how to do it. Tracy says, just FYI, if you're going to order that heat tool, make sure not to get the European version. I guess it's got a European plug on it. I must have lucked out because I, I didn't even notice that there was two options. <laughs> Thank you, Chastity. You like the lettering? Okay. Look at this teal mint color. This is so pretty. It's very complimentary to my mustard colored shirt too, which are the colors of our Southern Adornments live event, mustard and teal. <laughs> Sandy said the half beads would be cute in the center of those flowers. Yes, they would, Sandy. Somebody should do that. I didn't even think about that. That's a great idea. Okay, so for peaches, I think I'm gonna use this color. It's called melon. It's like a peachy pink, if you will. And then I think I'm gonna take a little bit of maybe an orange and a darker orange. I kind of want to just play around with the colors and do some shading. So we'll see how this goes. What's this color? This is called Scarlet. And then I also have this patio paint that's called Pumpkin. It's a lighter orange. So let me show you in my paint palette what I have here. These are my shades that I'm gonna use for my, my peaches. And we're just gonna work one peach at a time because if you're doing shading, a lot of times the paint will dry fast and you don't have time to do the shading if you do all of them at once. So actually, back that up for a second. Let's go ahead and put a base coat on all of our peaches and then we'll work one peach at a time to do the shading. So I can actually switch to a larger brush for this. Good morning, Sheila. Thank you, Angie. I try to give out all kinds of tips when I'm live painting. So take the melon color and we're just gonna paint our peaches solid melon to start with, and then on the second coat, we'll add some shading. It's better to get a base coat down first. I forgot that part when I was explaining. Are your kids getting out of school soon? Mine are getting out in, what, eight more days? Eight days after this. They only have eight more school days. We realized it last night when we were talking at dinner. What'd you say, Leah? Uh, Ugh, yeah, ugh. <laughs> I mean, on the one hand, I'm excited about it because we do have a family beach trip planned um, the day after they get out of school. But on the other hand, yeah, it's going to be hard running a business with kids home. But 
I think I'm just going to have to be strategic about, you know, planning activities so they know they have something exciting that week to look forward to. And, like, that way they let leave Mama alone so she can get her work done. Bribery is your friend during the summers if your kids are the kind who love to go and do stuff constantly. So come up with So my plan is to come up with something that they want to do each week and bribe them to let me get some work done so that we can go do the fun thing. Erin's asking what kind of brushes you use and where do you get them? Okay, so the brush I'm using today is a um, glitter brush from Jamie Connor. Um, her business is called Murals and More by Jamie Connor. She sells these cute little gl glitter brushes. This is one from her Glitter Brush of the Month Club last month. I mean, sorry, not last month, last year. And you see it's got like red, white, and blue and little fire fireworks on it. Super cute. Um, so you can get those from her. If you want just standard brushes, these are from DecoArt. I like those a lot. They have blue handles. Uh, we also have some on our website for sale as well. And we're getting ready to add some, some more to that in the next month or two. Our stock is getting kind of low. They are great brushes. I like them a lot. This paint is super thick, so I keep adding just a little bit of water to it because it just, it's like it's like pudding. It just would not smooth out. I do have church camp planned for the boys in late June, so at least they'll have that to go to. And then Charlie's going to do, she's going to go spend a few days with her Aunt Tony at the end of June, and she's gonna go to like a theater kind of camp where you're, it's only like during the day, and then at the end of the week, they put on a production for all the parents, and I think the production's gonna be Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory, and you know how she loves to be the center of attention and the star of the show, so she says she, she would, be, like when you talk to her about it, she's like, I don't know, that makes me nervous, I don't wanna be on stage, but I'm like, girl, you were born for the stage, like you love being the center of attention, it's gonna be fine. Um, let's see. How do I prevent paint boogers? I just try to catch them as they come, as they are on the, like when they get on the wood, I try to like scoop them up and off and put them on a paper towel with my brush as quick as I notice them. Oh, if your paint's kind of clumpy, it may just be time to get some new paint. You can try to revive it a little bit by adding a little bit of water to it and stirring it. Um, but if it, if it keeps having like those icky, that icky stuff in there, like the paint boogers and stuff, and it gets to be frustrating, it may just be time to throw it out and get you some new paint. Because it is frustrating when you're working with really old paint. My paint, <laughs> hey Paula, um, my paint, when it's starting, like if I've had some for a long time, does start to get thicker. So sometimes just adding a little water fixes it. I think Hobby Lobby has Ooh. Aaliyah says Deco Art has their paints on sale for 99 cents at Hobby Lobby this week. Is Amazon the best place to purchase paint brushes in bulk? I have a paint party in progress. Paula, somebody in the Painters Clubhouse recently shared that Hobby Lobby had, a, and I think it's the sales probably are over already, but if you watch for it again, they have a, was it a classroom pack of brushes? And it's like 30 something brushes for like 10 bucks. It was really cheap. Um, so go check out the Hobby Lobby and look for like the classroom packs and then they run those on sale maybe like once a month or so. So I'd keep an eye out for those. Yes, Marie, I think this would be so cute on the welcome door hanger. Okay, so that's one coat of the melon paint. So now that we have that done, we're going to start doing our second coat and then adding in our shaded colors because we want our peaches to kind of look um, peachy. Like, they, like they're not just one flat color. Hi, Bonnie. Okay, working one peach at a time. Let's see. I'm going to start with the one that's all the way in the back here. All the other ones sort of appear to be stacked on top of this one. And I'm just going to give this peach one more coat of the melon color. And then while that paint is still wet, I'm going to start doing some shading. Now, if you're not a very fast painter and you want to try shading, um, you may need to get some sort of like floating medium or something like that that you can mix with your paint. It'll keep your paint wetter longer so that you can keep working with the paint. You can also just get a little bit of water and kind of dab it on there and keep the paint, you know, nice and moist. So now that I've got that melon color on there, I'm going to pick up a little bit of this pumpkin orange and kind of just add just a little bit of it 
and I'm, there's really no rhyme or reason to why I'm doing this. I'm just experimenting. So I'm just going to put some of that kind of in this little area. And then just kind of, if you get too much, you can kind of do like a little, almost like you're sweeping the floor sort of motion. And it'll kind of blend it out. And let's pick up a little of this, bit of this scarlet and see if we like that. I'm going to do that around the edges. I kind of wanted to have it be like the darker shade. But this may be too harsh. I don't know. I think if I blend it out okay, it'll be fine. Aaliyah's capturing pictures of my hands at work here. But the good thing about doing this back back um, peach first, we're working on this bottom peach, is because when we go to do this peach and this peach, if I accidentally get on top of those with some of that darker red, I'll be able to just cover it right back up when I go to do the... Um, the melon color. You caught me on your lunch break. Good. Hi, Corey and Robert from Utah. Okay. I think it also needs like a little bit of yellow or something. You know how peaches kind of have that yellowy tint to them sometimes? That lid must have been broken. So I'm going to get out a little bit of this primary yellow and see what that looks like. We're experimenting with these peaches. A little bit of sun kissed. Yeah, like sun kissed. So let's see what that looks like. I, I may have gotten way too much on here. But I kind of just want to see and make them look, yes, sunny. I like this a lot. And this one might look a little bit more um, like a different painting technique than what I normally do. But I think it'll be fine. It's going to be cute. So a little bit of yellow on there. Makes that look sort of sun-kissed. Let me show you what it looks like. That's with the yellow. So you can see we went from like a flat melon color. And this is with like the orange and the, the scarlet and the yellow all blended in. And I don't like how that's not blended there. So you just do like a little sweepy motion. If you don't have any of that melon on your brush, you can get a little bit. Oop, I got too much of it. Sometimes you got to kind of play with it. And sometimes if it won't blend out, what you can do is get a little bit of water on your brush, dab your brush off on a paper towel, and then it almost acts like a little bit of an eraser for you to blend that out. Much better. Thank you. Okay, I'm glad you guys are finding this helpful. All right, let's move on to the next one. You don't have to rinse your brush out. Just kind of dab it off like on a paper towel if you've got too much paint on it. And then let's see, I was gonna do that one, but I think I'll do this one because this one looks like it's a little bit more in the background. So like I was saying, we can make that little line right across there to kind of like clean up where we might've gotten the red over onto that peach. And then give this peach another coat of the melon. And once that's covered, we're going to start with, I'm going to go in with the scarlet color. So this is kind of our deep peach color. It's a scarlet red, but when you blend it with this melon, it kind of looks like a peachy red. So that's the thing is you got to work while your paint is still wet. And if your paint's starting to dry, get just a little bit of water on your brush and keep keep working it around and put it in all the areas you think there's going to be shading. Okay, so I'm dabbing my brush off on my paper towel and now I'm going back and I'm kind of just blending that in a little bit more. Shading is not something I'm super, super adept at yet. I feel like I'm still sort of learning how to do it, still sort of getting, getting better at it, but it's not something I'm super good at yet. Okay, picking up a little bit of that orange now. I'm going to bring a little bit of it in. Well, now it talks about how Erica Wallace says it. Yes, Erica is the queen. Of Erica Spain. is the queen. I watch her videos, and I'm like, Erica, I need to do it like you. Like, I, I think about her when I'm, when I'm doing it. How, how could I do it like Erica's doing it? But she's just so good at it. Yeah, let's do Happy Mail. Favorite peach recipes, maybe? Ooh, yes. What is your favorite thing to make with peaches? Mine would be peach cobbler. And you guys know Uncle Corey that's over here all the time. Uncle Corey, his mother passed away years ago, but she always used to make him peach cobbler. Look at that peach. 
Looks delicious, doesn't it? Um, she always used, actually, let's make like a little split right down the middle of this peach here. I'm gonna do that with a little bit of melon and um, a tiny bit of that scarlet. Grilled peaches. Mm. Grilled peaches, I've never had that. Look, we just put a little split right down the middle of that one. I kind of feel like this one might need one too. Um, but anyway, Corey's mom used to make him peach cobbler. And so now that she's no longer living, he gets me to make him peach cobbler every now and then. He'll beg a favor and say, I'm really craving peach cobbler. Could you make some? <laughs> and so I love to make him some peach cobbler. Ooh, peach ice cream. Homemade peach ice cream is the best. Yes, that's what Tammy just said. I don't know how to make homemade ice cream. Am I the only one? Do you know how to do that, Aaliyah? Yeah, I do. It's kind of hard, isn't it? No. No? Maybe my grandparents always just made it look harder than it was so they wouldn't have to do it very often. Well, running the ice cream maker's hard, but recipe's not. Oh, yeah. I figure I could mix up the recipe. It's the ice cream maker thing that I would mess up. <clears throat> Cobbler's your favorite, too. Cobbler with vanilla bean ice cream. Warm cobbler. Mm. You are making yeah, me hungry. Yeah, cobbler's gotta be warm. Mm hmm Yes. Okay, look. Two peaches are done. Two peaches are not. What is peach crown, Wanella? I've never heard of that. Or is that an alcohol? Like, I don't know. It sounds like an alcoholic drink. <laughs> Ooh, Marita's peach hand pies. Oh, is that kind of like homemade fried pies, like apple pies, but with peaches? I think my grandma has done those. Okay, so we're repeating the process. We're putting down our melon and getting it nice and wet. I did water it down a little bit. I'm gonna go in with my scarlet now and kind of do it around the edge of the peach. She says homemade ice cream is her specialty. She used to send you a recipe. Yes, you need to teach me your ways, Pam. I don't even own an ice cream maker. Happy mail winner is Teresa Billows Clover. Clever? Clever. Clever. Congratulations. Oh, it is alcohol. <laughs> That's why I wouldn't know what it is. I don't drink. I'm like, what are you talking about? Peach pepper jelly. Mm, I don't know. I usually don't like pepper jellies. I know a lot of people do, but I never have for some reason. Okay, got my scarlet going around there. So now I'm going to take some of my pumpkin orange and kind of Bring that in and kind of blend that into the pink. <clears throat> if you're having a hard time with your shading because like it feels like you keep erasing what you did, you know what I'm saying? Like you put your color down and then as you're blending it, you feel like you're erasing it too much. Part of that's probably because you're doing too many brush strokes. Shading almost works better, I feel like, for me anyways, if I do less brush strokes. And so it's almost better if I have less paint on my brush and I can do less brush strokes to get it right. Okay, now I'm adding some of that yellow, giving that sun-kissed sort of look. And now let's do the little split down the middle of the peach, only let's make this one go the other direction. And I also feel like it helps if you keep your brush sort of going in the same direction when you're doing stuff like that. Okay. Marie says the pie crust hold it over like a mini calzone and stuff with fruit. I'm in. Yeah, I can do that. I've heard people make those too in their air fryer now. Ooh, fried pies in an air fryer. Yeah. <gasps> May have to try that. I've heard people do that. I have an air fryer. I'm not very adept at using it. Right now, I'm pretty pretty much only using it for reheating pizza. <laughs> it's a little bitty one, though. I did. I used to have a giant one, and it was so intimidating to me. So then I got rid of it, and then I convinced myself, okay, I'll give an air fryer another shot, and I got a small one. And now we just use it to reheat a slice of pizza. Or fried foods, sometimes. Okay, bringing that scarlet color in now. Let's do some along the bottom. Underneath the leaf. Now let's get the orange. And then I'm going to go 
back in with a little bit more melon and kind of blend that orange and then get some yellow. I feel like the yellow is what really suddenly makes this appear more peachy. Because up until then, it's kind of like, oh, it's just, uh, it's a lot of oranges and a lot of like pinks and stuff like that. But when you add that yellow, it feels like it suddenly becomes peachy again. And I accidentally got over on this peach here, so I gotta fix this. It's gonna bug me. There we go. Okay, now for the little split. Let's see, we'll do this one kind of going up and over that way. Get a little bit of melon on the tip of the brush and then just on the corner, I'm getting a little bit of that scarlet, the darker red. Start up near the stem and just pull it down and keep going back up and pulling it down until you get it nice and smoothed out the way you want it. And then you can kind of I'm gonna go back in with some yellow right next to that. Move your camera just a tad. I can't see the egg carton. <laughs> the egg carton. Yeah. Is that okay right there? Did I have it pulled down too far? I can see the wall on your right side, but I can't see the egg carton. <laughs> Let's move to the side. <laughs> Is that right? Or, oh, there we go. Is that better? That's better. Okay. <laughs> I, need, I need to draw a box on the table and say, yeah. stay within this well, box. <laughs> I can't see you dipping in the egg. Oh, okay. Um, what other platforms is she live on? I'm live on Facebook right now also. And then after this is over, um, if you want to watch this video in full, because I know those of you on TikTok right now are like, ah, I didn't get to see her do this, and you missed it, they don't, for those of you who don't know, lives on TikTok don't stay on TikTok. Like, once they're done, they're done. They're gone. So, um, what we do is we take the recording of it and we upload it to our YouTube channel after the live is over. So, within an hour or so, if you are um, subscribed to my YouTube you should get a notification letting you know that the video is now available to watch on my YouTube channel. So go follow my YouTube channel and you can watch the whole thing there this afternoon. We'll also have the links to all of these things. So this is the peach basket design from our shop at shopdoorhangers.com. I'm painting the 12 inch size. So if you wanna buy one of these and have us ship it to you and you can paint it and you can follow the video, you can do that, or, um, whoops, hang on. I accidentally got some paint over on my peach, so I'm gonna see if I can pick it up with a paintbrush, with a wet paintbrush. I got the stem. There we go. Sometimes if you have a wet paintbrush, you can almost just like erase what you just did. Especially if what was underneath was still wet. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh, I was saying if you wanna buy one of these wooden cutouts, we can ship them to you. And it will have the design laser etched on it like what I'm painting now. So later we're going to go back and we're going to paint the words just peachy on here. And you wouldn't have to figure out what's peaches up here. All of this is laser etched so you can just paint right along the lines. Okay, this color I forgot to even tell you is called cinnamon stick. It's kind of a reddish brown. So that's the color of my little stems. If you guys want to text me, my text number is 270-207-9091. Took me a second to memorize that. So just text me and we will send you a supply list. If you text the word list to that phone number, we'll send you a supply list for this project. So you have a link back to the video um, and all of the colors that I'm using today on this project. So text list to my text number and we will give you that supply list. Are you gonna shade the grooves of the box the peaches are in? Yes, I haven't got to that part yet, but I am. Okay, let's do this one. Let's do Hauser Medium Green, and then we're also gonna do this Irish Moss. We'll do some real pretty green flowers. I'm gonna kinda do a little bit of shading on these two. So we'll do a base coat of the Hauser Medium Green. It's the darker one. And then we'll go back and on our second coat, we'll add some of that brighter green just as a pop, like the sun is shining on them. 
If you're new to painting, don't feel like you have to start off with all this shading. This, to me, is a little bit more of like an intermediate um, skill. And so it can be kind of intimidating if you're learning to just, you, you know, what paintbrush to even use or what color, what kind of paint to even buy to just jump straight into shading. But this sort of technique is something that, you know, you could start to learn to do after you've kind of got the basics down. And it's going to make all the difference in your project. Those little green leaves look so cute on there. Irish moss, you don't have that one. Tracy, Irish moss is so pretty. Look how pretty this is. I love this green. It's a little too intense by itself for these peaches, but we're gonna add a little bit to kind of make it look like um, brightness on the leaves. <laughs> Thank you, you think my hair is cute today. I feel like it's a hot mess on this side. I need a hair clip or something, but I did recrimp it this morning with my crimper. <laughs> some days it lays right and some days it don't. We just go with it. Okay, that coat is dry. So now let's do the second coat of the Hauser Medium Green. And then we're going to add some of that Irish Moss. Have we done another Happy Mail person yet or did we just no, do one? we're ready for two. Okay, let's go ahead and do another Happy Mail. Um, tell me what you have planned this summer. Are you going to be going on a trip or a vacation or anywhere special? Okay, look at the leaves. See? No Irish moss and with the Irish moss. Do you see how it looks like the sun is glinting off that side of the leaf? So I did that by painting the whole leaf with the darker color of green first. And then I picked up just a wee little bit of that Irish moss on the corner of the brush. Show your brush loaded. Okay, well. I feel like I need to dab some off so they can see it because it was kind of mottled all over there. Okay, can you see how it's just barely on the corner of the brush? I don't have hardly any paint on that brush to begin with. Wow, Wendy, I'm so jealous. Can I come help? Oh my goodness. Did you see what Wendy said? I did. She's starting an alpaca farm. That's like a dream. That sounds wonderful. <laughs> I just want to come spend the sun summer with Wendy. Do you sand in between coats? No, never, never, never. Dina's learning, to, Deanna's learning to paint. Okay, how many of you guys are beginner painters? That's a whole other question. Maybe we should save that till our third Happy Mail, but either way, if you're a beginner painter, um, I want you to go right now to the link in my description. If you're watching on TikTok, it's also linked over in my bio. There is a free beginner's guide to painting door hangers ebook that's gonna help you so much. It's got links to resources, it's got links to videos, links where to get stuff if you need supplies. And then it's also got lots of advice on getting started and like what's the best practices and things that I have learned through all the years of my painting. So go grab that free ebook and use that to get started. Okay, look at these leaves. Don't they look so cute now? Sister trip to Branson, that sounds like fun. Southern Adornments Live, of course, that's what my plans are. Two trips to North Carolina. Are they for business or for pleasure, Wendy? I used to live in North Carolina. Adding on to your house, that's exciting. Camping, that's always fun. My kids love to go camping. Wendy's, Uncle Corey takes them. Wendy says, come on over. <laughs> Where are you at, Wendy? I'll be there in a minute. Tell me when the alpacas arrive. I'll come help unload them. <laughs> uh, Southern Adornments Live is going to be your vacation. Awesome. I can't wait. You want to go to Hot Springs, just not planned yet. Ooh, that sounds nice. Thank you, you like the peaches? Well, if you're just now hopping on, we just finished teaching how to paint these peaches and you can catch the replay on YouTube later. Okay, our winner for the Happy Mail is Miss Alma Dyer. Alma, you won. So email us your address and we'll send you some Happy Mail. Wendy's in Missouri. Oh, that's not far, Wendy. That's there's, not far. There's a pack of here. There's a farm. Is there really? Far, yeah. Do you know them? Can we just go play with the alpacas one day? Uh, we've been, yeah. <laughs> Aaliyah's going to take me down the road somewhere to play with alpacas. She says there's a farm not far. Let's try this color. I'm not sure about it yet. It's uh, Laguna, and I'm going to see if it's dark enough. To, I think it is to kind of be the inset of, these little, of this little basket. I kind of feel like it feels wrong. Mm, see? It just feels wrong. It doesn't feel... Sometimes that's what happens if you take a color and you mix a color with it to kind of make 
or not, I mean, if you take a color and then you try to make it the darker version of that color and then it's really not. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna take the original color, which was the teal mint. I'm gonna add like a drop of this mermaid tail color. So that way it kind of still stays with the same tone of the original color of paint. And we're gonna try that. Actually two drops, one drop was not enough. Ooh, peach dumplings sounds good. Okay, let's try this. Oh, still not dark enough, okay. More than two drops, let's do two or three drops here. Okay, this is feeling more right. It's just a subtle difference, but it make, it does matter. So this is the mermaid tail color blended with the teal mint. Let me show you what that looks like. I kind of like that tone better. Something else I thought might be kind of fun is if we do a little bit of dry brushing on the edge of this basket with that same color. So let's try that. Dry brushing is when you take a scratchy brush like this or any brush really, but especially one of these little scratchy brushes and you just don't put a lot of paint on it. Dab it off on a paper towel if you're afraid you got too much. And then you just kind of scritch and scratch because you know, baskets are kind of scratchy anyways. They, they aren't perfect. Hold up, I forgot, I gotta dry these little inset things first or they're gonna smear all over the place. Hi Brenda from Alabama. Hey Beverly. Family wedding and college graduation, that sounds nice. Why not add black to darken the color? Um, because I didn't want to go that direction of color. I didn't, I wanted to keep with the saturation of color. I didn't want to darken it. I don't know how to explain it. It just didn't feel right. <laughs> okay, going back to adding the scratchy, sort of distressed look. I may even add a little bit somewhat across the, the basket too. Because we want this to look basketish. Kind of go in two different directions for a basket. Very little paint on my brush. If you're afraid to get it on your peaches, take that off. I was just being careful. I really feel like it could use a little bit of white too or something. Let's try that. Although you wanna dry in between. If you're adding another color, dry because then the, the teal and the white would mix and make a weird, weird color. What brush do you use for the lettering? Um, I could use a script brush. I'll probably do a paint pen this time though, because this is some very dainty lettering. Since I'm only painting this on a 12 inch size, it's very, very small. Okay. If you have to wash your dry brush, make sure to use a paper towel and get all the moisture out of it that you can, like squeeze all that moisture out because it's supposed to be dry. That's why we call it dry brushing. <laughs> okay, it's as dry as I can get it. We're gonna pick up a little bit of white, dab it off on our paper towel because I just want just a tiny bit. Paper towel's your friend. Ooh, I really like how this white is popping on the turquoise. And then I'm just gonna ever so slightly add just a teeny bit across the basket. I'm gonna slow down for video, for photo effect here because Aaliyah's taking pictures. Okay, let me show you what this awesome list looks like up close. Doesn't that look cool? Love it. Okay. All right. Now we can do our lettering and I'm gonna use, let's see. I may have to use my skinniest uh, pasta pen. This is the three millimeter size. 
it's almost empty, I feel like. And we're just gonna paint in the lettering that says just peachy. Okay, I lied. We're not gonna use this size. <laughs> it's gonna take forever in a day. I mean, I could, but sometimes you just get better coverage with a slightly bigger one. That's what we're gonna do. Now, this is not a Posca pen. This is Artistro acrylic paint markers. This is a, um, I don't know what size, medium point. And I'm not freehanding this lettering. For those of you who are wondering, the lettering is laser etched on the door hanger. So all I have to do is paint inside the letters. Are those pens worth it? All the paint markers I have used bleed out in these streets. Yes, I love these. I've never had problems with these bleeding. Um, and some of that might be user error. I don't know if you know about, you know, much about paint markers, but, um, hold up. I think I'm changing my mind again. <laughs> let me show you why. Okay. First, let me answer the first question before I go jumping on another tangent here. Um, the thing is you're supposed to shake these to mix the paint up, right? And then you're supposed to pump it or push this little nib down, like on a piece of paper or something till the paint flows. But that's it. Like, don't keep pumping it. I rarely have to re-pump my pen midway through a project, unless I've just been using it for several minutes and it starts to dry out. So if, if you are getting the problem with it, like burping or spitting on your project, it's probably because you've like pumped it too much and there's way too much built up down in the nib. So that could be part of your problem. Okay, let me show you why I'm switching to a brush. Because this is laser etched and this lettering is so tiny, do you see how it's looking kind of bumpy right through here? It's not like, it's hard for me to, it's hard to get a paint pen down in the cracks and crevices of the laser etching sometimes. And so if you have that problem, sometimes it's better just to switch to a paint brush because the paint will seep down into those cracks and I can get a much smoother application with a paintbrush than with a paint bin in this case. How did you get those letters on there? So the letters are laser etched on here using my Thunder Laser laser machine. So if you end up buying this design from our shop, um, it will come with the lettering laser etched on it already. So you won't have to freehand the lettering. Okay, I'll show you up close sort of the difference of why I switched to doing the brush. And this is just a tiny little round tip brush. Do you see how much clearer that J is compared to the U and the S? The U and the S aren't very clear because it's like the paint pen couldn't get enough paint down in the cracks of the laser cutting. You just gotta be careful using a, a brush because you wanna make sure there's no like stray bristles that are gonna mess you up. So I, that's what I was double checking to make sure there was no stray bristles sticking out anywhere with paint on them. You definitely don't wanna use a scraggly brush for this. You wanna use one of your best, most like newest, smoothest brushes. Last happy mail? Yep, let's do one more happy mail and tell me what stage you are in painting. Like, are you a beginner? Do you feel like you're somewhat experienced? Are you um, sort of feel like you're an expert? Are you a business? If you're a business owner, maybe tell us your business name. If you're a complete newbie, that's okay. Tell us that too. Terry's asking where Shan is. Haven't seen her in a while. Shan is in her senior year of college. Matter of fact, I bet she's getting ready to graduate this next week or yes, this week. I talked to her this week. She graduates Saturday. And so we kind of told her to just take some time and focus on getting her degree um, because her senior year has been very um, busy. And so we told her if, if things settle down in the summer after you finish your degree, you know, holler at us and you can come back and take more photos for us. But it was getting real hard for us to work out our schedules between her classes. And she's also an, a student athlete. So she had lots of practices and th you know, track meets and things she had to go to. Yeah, she's competing next week after graduation. Oh, so it's not over when graduation's over, I guess. Mm -hmm. Wow. <clears throat> All 
I'm making sure to use a very light touch on these skinny parts and then to kind of like push down a little harder on the areas that are thicker to get more of that thicker downstroke. So that's stuff that you just kind of have to practice. The more you paint and get used to it, the better you'll get. But like I said, I'm not freehanding this lettering. This lettering is laser etched on the door hanger. So I'm literally just painting inside the lines. Let me see if you can see. See that? You can see the H and the Y right there. Just painting inside the lines. One lady just started in April. Other people have their own business. <laughs> Kimberly says I'm a long-term beginner. <laughs> I love that, Kimberly. That's hilarious. Long-term beginner. That's okay. This is not a race. Your journey is your journey. And if you want to move, you know, at a slow, slow pace to learn, that's totally okay. There is no rush. A lot of people do this just because it's very therapeutic and relaxing. And so if you find it very relaxing to watch me paint, just imagine how relaxing it would be if you were painting yourself. Okay, our happy mail winner is Jessica Weiss. Is that how you say it? Weiss, Weiss, W-E-I-S. Jessica, if you will send us an email with your mailing address, we'll send you some happy mail. Okay, lettering is done. I kind of feel like I want to add a little bit of that dry brush lettering like we did in the Painter's Clubhouse the other day. What do you think? Yeah? Wanda says, I'm always still learning, but I love to paint. I'm still learning too, Wanda. I've been doing this for seven years, and I still feel like I'm learning how to shade, and I'm learning how to do new techniques. Like I said earlier, I did some of that 3D um, puff paint on this design behind me, but I didn't do it till after the, the lesson was over because I was like, what if it's a complete flop? I just need to practice, and so... Knowing that I was going to keep this door hanger, I wasn't ever going to sell it or anything. I didn't mind practice, practicing on it. And so we're always trying to grow our techniques and learn new things. Hippie Cricket has a painting business. I watch you on TikTok all the time. You're so talented. If you'd be, ever be interested in teaching a tutorial in the Painter's Clubhouse, you would be very good at it. Let us know. <laughs> Thank you, Wanda. Okay, I think my lettering's pretty dry. Will I say lives always be in Texas? No, probably not. No, we had two so far in Nashville, and this is the first one we've ever had in Texas. I bet next year um, it would be somewhere else. I don't know yet. What do you do to get inspired on new designs? I get inspiration by traveling, by going shopping, just getting out of my craft room, to be honest with you. Um, so anytime I'm out shopping or something like that. I try to pay attention to like what's the latest greatest new trends or what do I notice in home decor like I go to places like Kirkland's and Hobby Lobby and um where else Joann's places like that and I just love to kind of pay attention to see what things are popular right now and what I'm noticing trends of and sometimes I might just see the cutest little like set of dishes or napkins or something and I'm completely inspired. You just never know. They're asking about the puff paint that was on the strawberry one. Yes. Was it deco art or what kind of paint? No, was it? it was just some from Walmart that I bought. It's like the tulip. I think it's made by tulip. And is it in the centers of the flowers or where is it you used it? Um yeah, I did some in the centers of the flowers and I did some um Kind of like on, the seeds are our black puff paint, and I did some like on the edges of the leaves, and then uh, I did some around the flowers also. I think, or no, that was just glitter. Yeah, that was the glitter puff paint. Okay, let me show you with this just just a touch of white on this lettering. That's kind of like a dry brush technique with a round tip brush. Okay, now I'm going to take that paint pen that I was using earlier, that real skinny one, and see about adding some little details to our peaches. Do all my leaves first. Now, when you're adding these little details, don't 
focus on staying like on the etched lines or anything like that. Kind of go like on the insides of the shape. So see how I didn't stay on the edge of the leaf. I kind of came in from it. That makes a big difference. Also move quickly because this one's already feeling like it's drying out. So I am going to actually pump it and I'm only just going to pump it enough till I see that the paint is flowing better. So like one pump and then make a stroke. The faster you move making these little brush, these little paint pen strokes, the more effortless they're going to kind of look. Let's do some on our basket here. Yes. Uh, accent like these little areas of the basket. Okay. Let me show you. You see how that kind of defined the basket and defined the peaches just a little bit? And if you want to, you can also take a white paint pen and add a few little touches with it as well to kind of add some whimsy. Hang on, this one feels... They are, but Brenda, the more you do them, the better you will get. I promise that. But if you can ever kind of like trust yourself to just let go and to do it because it's fun, you'll like the result a whole lot better. I was kind of forced into getting faster at it back in the days when I did paint parties because at the paint parties, everybody would come up to me after the party was over or after the party was almost over and they'd say, will you like work your magic? You know, you know, do your thing on it and add some finishing touches. You know, you're just so good at that. And so like I would have like a line of 20 people wanting me to do that for them. So I just had to learn to get fast. And y'all back then I didn't know about paint pens. I was doing it all with a round tip paintbrush. <laughs> but that made me, it forced me to get comfortable with doing it fast so that I didn't think about it. I just went off of instinct. So this is how it turned out. There's our basket of peaches. What do you think? You love it? Corey loves it. <laughs> all right, y'all, that's all for today. If you want to get the paint um, list for this project, I want you to text list to my text number. I put it up in the video description, but if you're watching on TikTok, I'll put it on here for you. 270-207-9091. Text LIST to this number. And then it, we will send you a supply list with a link back to this video and all the paint colors that I used and where you can find this design in our shop so that you can easily get it. So screenshot this if you need it for later. I'll even smile for your screenshot. <laughs> I'm silly. Hey, Colleen. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you, Pat. Y'all have a wonderful afternoon. Go grab that free ebook in the description also. See you later. Bye, y'all.